What's up guys, today's video is on the top 5 best running shoes of 2024. Through extensive research and testing, I've put together a list of options that'll meet the needs of different types of buyers. So whether it's price, performance, or its particular use, we've got you covered. For more information on the products, I've included links in the description box down below, which are updated for the best prices. Like the video, comment and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get started. Number 5 Brooks Adrenaline GTS 23 The GTS 23 is a shoe that sits in the middle of the Brooks lineup. According to the Brooks website, it is categorized as more cushioning, which is between standard and most. Your usual size in running shoes should be fine. Similar to the previous version GTS 22, the 3D fit print engineered upper of the shoe is light and breathable, and provides effortless security, so you don't need to over tighten the laces. The flat laces are much appreciated. However, the collar of the GTS 23 feels more plush and is cut slightly lower on the ankle than the GTS 22. This makes the shoe more comfortable to wear. Brooks has updated the DNA loft cushioning to V2 in the GTS 23, which makes it feel slightly softer and lighter. However, the difference in weight between this shoe and the GTS 22 is minimal. This softness means that it is not a shoe for those who like to run fast. But it is more responsive than it appears, making it perfect for everyday runners who want to pick up the pace when they feel like it. In my opinion, the GTS 23 is a better shoe than the GTS 22. While the previous model is a dependable and comfortable workhorse, the new iteration is even better. Number 4 New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainer V2 The New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainer V2 has a different look from its predecessor. The previous version had a high stack height and a large wedge of fuel cell midsole foam. However, the V2 still features fuel cell foam and a full-length carbon fiber plate that is placed between the foam layers, allowing for a decent amount of bounce underfoot. The shoe also includes New Balance's Energy Arc technology, which is a hollow channel in the middle of the shoe that enhances energy return. Regarding the fit, I found my typical New Balance size, UK 5.5 slash US 7.5, had enough room in the toe box. It's worth noting that I usually go up half a size in New Balance shoes compared to my other running shoes, UK 5 slash US 7, as I find that New Balance shoes tend to be shorter in length. The upper of the Super Comp Trainer V2 has changed from the previous version slightly stiffer, almost see-through material, and it's an improvement. The upper fits nicely on the foot, and there's no rubbing or chafing when wearing the shoe. I was able to lace the shoe tightly around my foot for a secure feel while running. The upper is similar to that of the New Balance Fuel Cell Super Comp Elite V3, but slightly less performance oriented. The Elite V3 is New Balance's premium carbon fiber racing shoe designed for marathons. New Balance has worked to reduce the weight of the shoe. The previous version weighed 11.3 ounces in men's sizes and 9.3 ounces in women's sizes. The V2 is slightly lighter, weighing 10 ounces in men's sizes and 8 ounces in women's sizes. As previously mentioned, the midsole of the shoe contains New Balance's fuel cell midsole foam. Number 3 Nike Vaporfly 3 In the world of running shoes, the Nike Vaporfly 3 stands out as the top choice for race day. It features a combination of Zoom X foam, a carbon plate, and a lightweight upper that make it perfect for fast races. While it's not suitable for easy runs, it's the ideal shoe for starting a race. If you're looking to shave off some time in your road races, from one mile to a marathon, we think this shoe is your best bet. The Zoom X foam is one of the best features of the Vaporfly 3. With 39mm of bouncy foam in the heel and 29mm in the front, it's just under the maximum stack height allowed by World Athletics regulations. This provides a good amount of lightweight cushioning. The Vaporfly 3 excels in marathon pace or faster but it's less enjoyable at slower paces. It remains comfortable and plush but the carbon plate makes it a very stiff shoe, making it less flexible at slower speeds. This shoe is incredibly responsive, thanks to the gentle rocker and high energy return. At the end of the forefoot, you'll feel a snappy toe-off that propels you forward. It's less noticeable than in previous models, making it feel more natural. The laces are well designed to hold tension, using a ridged shape that provides a secure fit. The heel isn't extremely pronounced, but the padding on the inside does an excellent job of holding everything down with minimal friction. You won't experience any rubbing or heel lift. Despite having a lot of foam, the Vaporfly 3 is incredibly light, weighing only 7.24 ounces per size 10.5 shoe. It's even lighter than some track spikes. Number 2 Hoka Clifton 9 During my first run in the Clifton 9, I wore medium thick socks and found the upper to be too tight, especially in the forefoot and toe box. I had to stop three times to loosen the laces and create more space in the shoe. 
I regretted not buying the wide version. After that run, I switched to thin socks, which improved the fit slightly, but it was still not wide enough. Compared to the Invincible Run 3 in the Nimbus 25, which are very soft and max cushion shoes, the Clifton 9 felt firmer, but I expected this. It felt similar to the Clifton 8 but softer. I also noticed that I did not feel the prominent bucket seat sensation in my arch that I had felt in previous Cliftons. The Clifton 9 has a lot of midsole foam, which is why Hoka uses compression molded EVA. However, many runners want Hoka to change the Clifton's midsole foam to something with more energy return, like TPU or supercritical foam. The new formulation of Kmeva in the Clifton 9 is softer and lighter than before, but it still does not have much energy return. The midsole has 3mm of extra stack height but is lighter than the previous version. The Clifton 9 has a soft and squishy ride, which makes it less suitable for fast paces. It is better for long runs and easy paces slower than 530 per kilometer, 852 per mile. The metarocker geometry of the shoe's rounded toe and heel creates a curved midsole for smoother and faster transitions. This makes long runs feel more efficient and energy saving. Stability in the Clifton 9 is excellent due to its wide base and midsole rim, which cups your foot and guides it through the gait cycle. This neutral trainer should be fine for even mild overpronators. The Clifton 8 was popular last year, and the Clifton 9 will likely be popular this year. It is a comfortable running shoe with a highly cushioned ride and a decent weight. Number 1 Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 40 For my first run, I tried the Pegasus 40, a daily trainer. However, I didn't enjoy it much because the ride felt flat and firm, and the outsole was slappy and loud against the road. Even though the new upper felt more comfortable and padded than the previous version, the ride felt the same. Compared to other daily trainers I've used recently, such as the Cumulus 25, Cloud Surfer, and Propel V4, the Pegasus 40 felt dated. There were two main differences between the Pegasus 40 and 39. Firstly, the mesh of the 40 was softer and stretchier, resulting in a roomier forefoot and toe box. Secondly, the midfoot flywire system was replaced with midfoot panels for improved lockdown. The ride of the Pegasus 40 feels the same as the Pegasus 39 because they have the same midsole and outsole. It's a firmer riding daily trainer, so expect a firmer ride than the Cumulus 25, Ride 16, Nova Blast 3, and Clifton 9. It's worth mentioning that the Pegasus 40 has a zoom airbag in the forefoot and another one in the heel. While the airbags prevent the ride from becoming too soft, they also make it feel lumpy if the surrounding react foam is not of a similar density. The Pegasus 40 doesn't have any modern technologies like an energy returning midsole or a rocker geometry. Therefore, it doesn't feel as efficient or energy saving as other trainers with these features. It has an old school ride that feels like any of the previous 10 versions of the Pegasus that I use the Pegasus 40 for only easy runs because I find it difficult to pick up the pace in it. It has a flexible forefoot and the react slash zoom air combination isn't very responsive. The midsole isn't thick compared to maximalist daily trainers like the Nova Blast so it feels stable but not very new age. The outsole is still the Pegasus's main strength. There's plenty of thick Duralon on the forefoot and harder BRS 1000 on the heel which won't wear down prematurely. I've taken previous Pegasus to over 1000 km of usage and the Pegasus 40 is capable of the same high mileage. Thank you watching this video do like and subscribe.